Hey guys, and welcome to another session on data visuals. Today we're going to be looking at Seaborn's hist plot or histogram. It's a really nice way to show distributions within data sets, and those can be univariate, so showing a single variable, or show two variables, which is called bivariate. Uh, I'll quickly scroll down to show you just what one looks like to give you an idea. Uh, luckily, the documentation on this is really good, so it's really easy to kind of go through all the different parameters and figure out exactly how to customize your histogram. But here is one. So in this case here, this is using a penguin data set and the penguin data set has a variable called flipper length. Now, what we're doing here is basically showing how amongst the entire data set, how all the different penguins are spread out here. So we can see this particular bin, we call these bins. Um, the penguins have been sorted into discrete groups according to their flipper length. So from around 170 up until 230. And then the length of this bar basically shows how many penguins are in that group. So we can see that in this case, um, this top one, it looks to be around sort of 78, 79, and they're in a kind of 190 to 195 flipper length range here. So basically we're showing from a given data set, sort them into different groups, and then show me how big those groups are. And this would be univariate, we're showing one variable being flipper length. Now alongside our regular plot, we can also pass in what's called a hue parameter. And in this case here, we can basically say, show me how those flipper lengths are distributed out, but then from that group, show me how the different species are represented here. So in this case, we can see the blue, the orange and the green. So say if I take the green one, for example, I think that's pronounced Gen 2, I don't know, I've probably got that awfully wrong, but we can see that that particular species of penguin occupies kind of the 210 to 230 range of penguin here. So we're not just showing a single variable, we're showing a single variable and then the groups within that variable, and that can be really powerful as well. What I wanna do now is flick into VS Code and we'll take a look at some real life examples. So in VS Code, I've got my imports good to go, and I've got a little list of things which I wanna kind of cover during the video here. Uh, here's my data set. It's the one I used in the previous video on student performance. And I'm using this because it's a really nice, simple, clean data set. And we can see the columns of interest here are math, reading and writing score. So each student has you know, they come with a gender, they come with a level of education, there's a lunch thing, so if they've had a standard or free reduced lunch. And then yeah, each student gets a score for math, reading and writing. So we're gonna be using these today to show our distributions. And then we can pick any one of these columns here to divvy up and make it a bit more interesting. So to begin with, let's just do a really simple one. We'll do sns.hisplot. And then it kind of follows the pattern for the previous ones we looked at. We're gonna be passing in a data source. In this case, data is equal to df. That is my data frame read in from a CSV file. And then I wanna pass in my X and Y. In this case, we're just gonna be passing in the X because we're doing a univariate plot. So if I said X is equal to reading score, this is now gonna create a single univariate plot to show me how the reading scores are distributed amongst this data set. Um, what I've got here, I've got a folder for images. So I wanna make sure that I'm saving it in there. So we're now going to say to matplotlib, you can then go ahead and save that figure in, and we'll do images slash histplot.png. Okay, and then we'll do python free, not main.py, we'll do python free histplots.py. And we should see in a second, images, histplot, and there we go. Now Seaborn will automatically calculate the bin size from the data set, but straight away, this gives us something really nice and simple to look at. We can see the tallest bin is this guy here, and this looks to be around, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five bins from 60 to 80. So imagine these can represent like four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So these kind of represent four each. So you can see the most common score is this one here. So kind of just on the of mid 70s, which is quite interesting. Um, we can see a fair few kind of got in the 98 range, which is pretty good. And as we kind of go down the scores here, less and less students tend to be scoring less in reading a score, which is good. Let's flip this on its side. And rather than just doing X, we'll simply change this to Y. And this will make it plot. So rather than being from bottom to top, if we say do this on the Y instead, it will put count on the X and then reading score on the Y. So we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll hit run and it'll overwrite that existing graph. And there we go. Uh, I think that's a bit more readable. I'm not too sure. But yeah, it's just one of those things we can do. If you're plotting some data, 
I would probably recommend experimenting between the X and the Y and just seeing in your point of view what looks best. So that's how you do a simple plot just like that. We specify a data being equal to some data frame and then we do X or Y depending on the orientation of some column and that's absolutely fine. Uh, let's do a different one. Let's do gender. See what we get. There we go. So done the count here so you can see in this case there's a few more females than there is males. So now what we can do is I want to bring in this hue parameter here. So if I turn this back to reading score, and I'm going to do this on the X, we're now going to do something quite interesting. I'm going to do X as reading score, and then we'll do hue being equal to gender here. And this is now going to apply groups to my data, which is quite cool. So again, we'll hit run, we'll override that existing plot. Now we go check out our plot, we can see how there are two genders, are distributed amongst this data. Now straight away, something from this I think is, is fairly obvious. So the females are represented by the blue bars here, and we can see way more blue lines kind of poking overhead here. Whenever there's gray, that just means there's both inside that one. So you can see in this case, if I was to take, um, let's do the big bar for example. So male and female represented by both this one, but then this little bit that peeks over the top, we can see this group is made up of purely females here, which is pretty interesting. Uh, if you come further down the line here, you can see more males tend to exist in that kind of 70 and below range. And of course, on the flip side, on the positive side, more females tend to exist in that kind of 100 down to around the 70 mark here. So again, you know, it's a really simple way to show how is my data distributed? And from that data, show me any groups and show me how those groups are distributed amongst my data as well. And it's pretty cool how that in Seaborn, it's basically a single line just to do all of that, which is quite nice. So one thing we can do to enhance this, and I think is, is probably worth doing, is that sometimes this can look a bit unreadable when we have the free colors. Uh, luckily, Seaborn provides us with a multiple parameter, which we can pass some additional stuff in to kind of improve how this looks. So if I do multiple equals, and we can see the options here, dodge, fill, layer, or stack. If I do stack, I wanna show you how the graph changes now. And there we go. So this is showing the same data, but it's just coloring the bars in a different way here. So in this case, rather than doing them like in the same bar and coloring it in, it's just stacking one on top of the other. So you might find that a more presentable way of showing this. Uh, we can do some more. There's stack, and there's also, in fact, your VS Code might do this, you can do dodge, fill, layer, or stack. If I do, in fact, layer is like the default. So if I do dodge, this one looks kind of cool as well. and can be kind of useful. So this just puts them side by side. So rather than doing them like one on top of the other, this will do them side by side. And again, yeah, it's just a nicer way of showing how those groups are represented within your data. Uh, now what we can do, um, whilst we're here, if you notice that that's a fair amount of bins showing, um, we can also, control the number of bins ourselves. So if I say bins, like if I just do five, for example, here, hit run, now the graph will look a whole lot different. So we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got the five bins, but because we're doing multiple equals dodge here, it's basically doing uh, like a male and a female bin for each one. So if I got rid of that for a second, we should now see the five, and we should see those mixed columns in each here. So that's a more simple representation. Uh, and sometimes I think in practice, I've had to do this a fair bit. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you have to tweak this to kind of get what you think is the best fit. Sometimes Seaborn gets it right the first time. But yeah, I think 15, yeah, 15 seems about okay to me. So yeah, it's just another option that we can tweak here. So we've looked at hue and multiple. And we've also looked at bins as well. So we can choose how many bins you wanna show. And then off those bins, do we want to show any groupings in this case? And then multiple shows of those groupings, do you want to stack them in the same bin, side by side, on top of each other? It's up to you. But yeah, Seaborn gives you that functionality to show these in a nice kind of cool, cohesive way. Okay, moving on. What I want to do now is look at element. So in the previous examples, each group had a bin, and that bin looks like a rectangle. What we can do now is we can use elements to dramatically change how the graph looks like. And I wanna look at two ways of doing this. So if I do element equals poly, short for polygon, this will now dramatically change the shape of our output. So without trying to explain it, it's probably best if we just hit run 
and then check that out. This, in my view, is perhaps a nicer way of showing this distribution here. So again, we have the two colors. We've got the female and the male here. We can still see that overlap. So we can still see like here, for example, both male and female have scores in this area, but we can see like it's the bit that kind of comes on top of each other. So this blue section here, we can see that this consists of entirely females. So this would suggest to me that females are doing better. And I think when you do it in this poly format, it's a much nicer way of kind of showing biases like that. Like this male group here, this tends to stick above in this lower half. So that indicates that there's more males in the kind of, like if you look at where the scores sit, 65 is about here. Yeah, so about the 65 kind of and less mark. It's more males on this side. There's more females on this side. So yeah, it just indicates that kind of split to me. And I think it's a really nice way of doing that. Uh, apart from poly, we can also do step and we can also take a look at another way uh, of showing this visually. And this looks a little bit like a skyline, doesn't it? So yeah, again, we can see that pattern. There's more blue over the top here. There's more orange over the top here, again, showing that split. Uh, and all this is really doing, it's just showing it kind of using these straight lines rather than using that kind of jagged polygon shape. They both, of course, show the same thing. Whether you use poly or step, they just look a bit different visually. So really, the choice is up to you. I don't really have a preference, but you know, according to what data you're doing, one may look better than the other. So that's poly and step in the element parameter here. Now for this next bit, I want to remove this here and I want to take a look at KDE here. So if I do KDE equals true, KDE is short for kernel density estimate. And what this does, this kind of gives you like a nice way of showing a distribution. So let's just quickly remove this for a second and we'll do that and just do it as a univariate plot just for a second. Now what this is doing, this little line here, our KDE line, is just showing us the pattern that emerges in the data. So rather than looking at this kind of, you know, these kind of bins here, this is just a nice way of showing the overall distribution, which is pretty cool. We can even make this work when we have a hue parameter passed in as well. So if I did, uh, let's do, let's do lunch this time. So for lunch here, I think there's two options. They have a free one or they have one where they pay for it themselves. So let's see if this makes any difference. And there we go. So we can see here, we've got the two lines. So the orange line, is representing those on the free or reduced lunch, and the blue is the standard lunch here. So this is suggesting to me that from the people who are having a free reduced lunch, if we kind of ignore everything else and look at their line, they kind of peak around sort of sub 60 mark here. So of all those students, I'd say the average sort of score is around 60-ish. For those on the standard lunch, however, that peaks a whole lot higher. So their kind of average or you know, most commonly occurring score looks to me to be around the sort of 76-ish mark here. So a really simple way of saying from these two groups, which ones tend to get the better results? I would argue it's those that are in the standard lunch group here. And again, look at our bins. They tend to show that as well. There's more orange kind of things peeking over the top as you get lower and lower down. But of course, from the blue ones, they, you know, they easily dominate these here. So it's just a nice way of showing how things are distributed amongst your groups. So yeah, I definitely recommend adding that in, especially if you just want a really nice, quick snapshot way to say, plot me a variable and of some discrete groups, just show me how they are distributed. And you can do that literally just by doing that. You pass in your hue to say, here's the grouping I want to represent. And then the KDE, it just says, yeah, go ahead and stick on that line as well. Now to round this video off, the last thing I want to look at is a bivariate histogram. So bivariate, just meaning two variables. We can do an X and the Y, so let's do Y according to writing score. Now I know from previous videos that these two have a very high correlation here, and it looks a little bit like a scatter plot when it comes out, except there is a key difference. Let me kind of run this, show you what I'm talking about. And we get this shape here. Now the way to interpret this is basically by the color of each of the cubes here. So if you look at where a cube intersects, so take this, let's take this guy here. So where there's a reading score of 20, and a writing score of, let's say, about 15. Now, because it's a lighter blue, that's kind of suggesting there's not many people who fall into this bracket here. Where as we get more into the kind of darker blues, like say this guy, that looks around sort of 76 on reading, and about the same for writing as well. So that's saying there are many more students who are in this ballpark 
than that is kind of on the extremities. And of course, you probably expect that. You know, in the middle here is when you tend to find the most people. So the darker the square, the more populated that data point is. And if you were here for the scatterplot video, this kind of linear kind of pattern it's drawing here will probably look familiar. Except the difference is when we do it this way, we can look at the kind of tone of each of these squares to determine how many people are there. Whereas with a scatter plot, it, sometimes it could be like just far too busy with all the dots all over the place. So this is just a much nicer way of showing it. But anyway, guys, that's all we have time for today. Uh, I know it was a bit of a shorter video, but I think histograms are a really important plot to learn, especially if you're kind of getting into the data science realm of Python. As always, guys, I will be leaving the link to this in the description. Have a good week, and I'll see you all in the next session. Cheers.